we will where Kathy, we have one person on the phone, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, we have Ryan. It's, it's Ryan's on the phone. Oh, Ryan's on the phone. Got it. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have Matthew McDevitt, who will be presenting his Eagle Scout project. We have Rick Shea, who is part of the township. And Rick, also, you are Matthew's scout leader, correct? No, I am just a township liaison for his project. And one that's going to make it all happen if, if it gets approved. Oh, that's okay. All. I stand corrected. I thought, mm -hmm. okay. Rick is an Eagle Scout himself, so it makes sense to have somebody who's been through the um, process to guide um, the Scouts through the Eagle Scout project. So process. his mentor. Yeah, I, was in, I was in talks with him a, a week ago or so, and it got we got it to this point. So. Okay. All righty. Well, good. Um, well, so what we will do is, um, Matthew, we will let you go ahead and um, present. We welcome you, and I think it's very exciting that, that you want to um, do your Eagle Scout and want to help out Central Park and Doylestown Township. And um, we're... I know I'm anxious to hear your presentation and hear your plans. And um, thank you very much for letting me be here. I'm going to share my screen. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you to just pause for just a second? Kathy, do we, we don't have a quorum, right? Yes, we do. One, two, three, four. John, Marianne, One, two, three, four. Four out of seven. Kathy and Paul. Oh, I can't count. My mistake. Okay. Oh, you're not counting yourself. <laughs> I'm right? not counting well, myself. I was. Um, do you want to do, cool. do the minutes first? Well, no. I just thought we would let Matthew come in and um and do his presentation, and then we could move forward. Sounds good. So Matthew. Welcome. Okay, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. The, the PowerPoint. Yes, can you speak up a little bit, Matthew? Yeah. Great. Okay, my name is Matt McDevitt. I'm an Eagle Scout candidate of Boy Scout Troop 139 of Warmster. I'm here to give a proposal for the installation of a nine hole disc golf course at Central Park. So what is disc golf? So disc golf is much like traditional golf, but instead it uses a Frisbee in a metal basket. The goal is pretty much the same. It is to get the, complete the course in the fewest number of shots. To play, it starts at the tee area and makes its way down to the, the basket or the hole. And players throw their next shot from their previous throw where it landed. And all the trees, shrubs, and terrain provide as like challenging obstacles for the course. And then finally, the, the shot lands in the basket and then the hole is complete. So who, who can play? So everyone can play disc golf. It's pretty easy to understand to play. Uh, different studies have found that throwing a frisbee has been a top 10 activity. Fist golf serves a broad portion of the community for all uh, skill levels, ages, and pretty much everyone because it's so easy to understand. How much does it cost to play? Many courses are free to play. And the equipment itself is very inexpensive. The discs uh, itself are about eight to fifteen dollars. You only need one to get started. So, what kind of construction would be planned for the a nine hole? Uh, construction of teeth, nines, and baskets would be. Foliage would be needed to be planted or removed. Just a few branches may need to be trimmed around tea pads or baskets. So here's the location of the disc golf course. 
the current proposal. Uh, so basket number one would be down at the bottom of the screen, going like a big loop uh, towards number Matthew, one. I'm sorry, am I missing? It's not changing I, on my screen. Uh, yeah, no, it's not, not, not either. Matthew, it's not, your, your slides aren't progressing. Which slide is it on right now? First one. one. Your first <laughs> one. Um, I think you just have to touch it. You just have to touch the slide on the yeah, I left. Am. Oh. Up my screen. Not sure why. Are you projecting on a second screen? Well, we could touch it, I guess. Let's see. No. No, it's not changing with us. Yeah, okay. that doesn't work. Okay. I'm sorry, she's not available. So, so Matthew, we can we can see your presentation, but um, we are still viewing the first slide. Um, that's interesting because I'm moving on my slides. So I don't know why it's not moving. You have two monitors? Are you projecting or something, right here? No, I'm just on one monitor. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and I'm only on Zoom and PowerPoint. That's it. Turn off your um, screen share and turn it back on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. I'll back. Okay, so this was the second slide that I showed. Uh, so for what is disc golf? This was the next one who can play. Uh, basically everyone can play. Are you able to see me going to the next slide? Yes. Yeah, you're 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 cruising now, Matthew. Good. And this was what? How much does cost to play? Yep. What kind of construction? And then this was where I left off. So here at the path of uh, the proposed location. So you can see uh, hole number one would be on the bottom. And then going in like a big loop. So there's Okay, wait, wait, wait. Will you go back, please, Matthew? I, I want to catch on to yeah, um, got it now. Wells Road. Yeah, that's the Game Grove. Uh, mm -hmm. Number nine is pointing to the Game Grove. Right. OK. <clears throat> but this isn't the um, exact location. This was just a very rough draft to show where. No, oh, yeah, it's a good rough draft. It's an idea. OK. Yeah, this one. I just wanted to grasp where we were going. It's still up. Do you need, need to create paths for people to walk? Uh, it shouldn't be needed. We should be able to use the ex existing paths that are already there. Okay. Uh, alrighty. So there's different types of T paths that are um, available that it could do that it could be doing. Uh, the first option are natural tea paths. So it would just be current grass at the present grade with no construction. So they're very uh, easy to build and very cheap. However, there are safety and liability concerns for the players getting hurt because they are very slippery. They hold in moisture for a long time. They're very uneven. There'll be lots of maintenance. They're poor quality. Poor quality. They're not, re not reliable, just overall not that great. Another option is uh, turf tee pads. They look very nice. They're cushioned on the player joints, lots of grip, and there would be no maintenance required. However, the only couple cons, it can get a little bit slippery when wet, but it doesn't hold in the moisture. And there is some wear and tear. It may need to be replaced about every 10 to 15 years. However, the best option I've found are paver tee pads. <clears throat> there is no maintenance that would be required. 
it's if uh, an individual favor needs to be replaced, it can be, and the entire team pad doesn't need to be replaced. It won't get chewed up by the mower. The pavers will last a very long time, about double the amount of time than the turf. And it gives lots of grip, and the players won't get, shouldn't get hurt on it. But the only con is it's a lot of material. There's one of what it could look like. For the uh, T-pad installation, it would be one T-pad per hole for a total of nine. It would be about five feet by 10 feet in size. It would be completely level with the ground. So here's a model that I did to show what it would look like. It would be different layers, it would be stone, uh, stone dust, and then the pavers at the top layer, all surrounded by a pressure treated frame. That would all be level with the ground, that top layer. The basket installation would include one basket per hole for a total of nine. The, the pipe that the basket is on would be into an anchor pipe that is in a hole that is measuring eight inches in diameter, about 18 to 24 inches deep, which is all in cement. And the basket pipe and the anchor pipe would be locked together with a padlock. The sign installation. So the signs are very important for a course to help get your way through the course and information about the course. At each T pad, there would be a sign that indicates the, the number, the length, the recommended flight path in the bar. There would also be next T signs that indicate the direction of the next hole. And at the very first T pad, I would have a sign with information and a course map. And all the signs would be installed in a similar fashion to the basket and they hold the concrete. What maintenance would be required? The only maintenance would be primarily mowing the grass at the fairway. The targets in the tee pad would require no regular maintenance. The only maintenance would be the possible replacement of the tee pads about every 30 years for paper tee pads. Now you mentioned the mowing the grass of the fairways, I thought it was going through meadows and things. So are you going to have to plant fairways of grass? Uh, it should be just mowing the grass. That should be about it. Okay. And then disc golf players are usually very eager to keep the fairways clear of trash, sticks, and debris. How much land would be needed? It would be about nine acres based on the design. And the nice thing about disc golf, it's able to utilize areas that are not very desirable for other activities, like the woods, rocky areas, or slopes. And it can coexist with other um, activities. So how does it benefit the community? So recreation, it's a very inexpensive form of recreation it would eliminate the need to travel to anywhere, anywhere else to play because the next close to this course would be like 20 minutes away. But now it would be a very close location to play and it would be a base to further promote the sport of disc golf. Park safety, uh, the installation of a disc golf course would increase foot traffic in the park at random times during the day, like the morning and evening. And therefore, it would discourage individuals who are only in the park to cause mischief and perhaps engage in crime. And different recreation departments have found that disc golf courses lead to a significant decrease in vandalism and litter. Interesting. For conservation, it's a very environmentally friendly sport. No trees would have to be removed. And unlike regular golf, the grass doesn't have to be mowed on a daily basis. No plants would have to be removed. And disc golfers take their great, great pride in where they play, and they help to reduce the amount of litter on the, the course in the park. Economics, a disc golf course can be installed 
for about six to seven thousand dollars, which is a lot less than the cost of a single tennis court or basketball court. The entire course could hold up to 40 to 50 people at any time, which is more than a tennis court and basketball court would combined. Budget the tea pads, baskets, signs, all the materials would cost up to seven thousand dollars, but the budget is very flexible at this time. All the fundraising, I would be doing all the fundraising and securing, securing all the funds through the donations from the community, different companies, and corporations, sponsorships. But donations from any stores are highly appreciated, including any donations from Doylestown Township. That's all I have. I appreciate your consideration and your time you've provided. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Any questions? I have several questions. Who else has questions? Thank you, Matthew. Very I well just want, together presentation. I would just like to congratulate him on the thoroughness of his presentation and how much work he put into it. Um, it's very impressive. Hey, any other comments, questions? Yeah, great job. Fantastic. I do have a question, Kathy. Okay. Um, Matthew, uh, again, that, that was a great presentation. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I learned something about disc golf. I just, since I didn't know anything about disc golf, now I know a lot. Um, I'm just wondering, ha have you walked the course that you propose? Uh, my concern is that we're cutting across some wetlands there, and um, I, I'm not sure how uh, navigable that uh, particular part of the park is, or some parts of the park, especially between uh, two and three. Yeah, that was my question before about a path. Oh, okay. Uh, between two and three, it would be just walking the normal path to get from. I see. So, so you don't you don't really envision anybody cutting across country there. You're there. Yeah. You would just take the pathway around. It wouldn't require to walk across. I was just trying to show the flow of the, the course. It's just a very rough design. I have a couple questions, Matthew. Do you do you have a timeline on this? Is there a um, you know a, a set time when you want this started and completed? I turn eight. I need to have it done by my 18th birthday, which is next year, October, October of 2021. I plan to do this project in the late spring of next year about May. Okay, so I just, you know, kind of along the same lines as John there. So is all of that grass that I'm seeing there, I'm trying to envision where the wetlands are. So, I mean, wherever we have a one or two, you know, hole or a red line, that's all grass at this point. Two, nine and eight right now, Paul, are, that's uncut right now. Okay. So you'd have to cut a path. Oh, that to that is there. Just, oh. just to clarify, I'm going to clarify for everybody one second here. One, two, nine, and eight are all weekly cut grass. Six okay. is a, a a corridor of grass, and seven is a corridor of grass that are already cut. Three has a berm that we cut between two uh, meadow fields. Four is cut. The only spot that's not truly cut is up around five. Okay, so that's not too bad then, right? I mean, it wouldn't be a lot of additional cutting, et cetera, is what you're saying, Rick, right? right? Uh, correct, there's, a, there's minimal additional cutting at all. Okay. Um, the other question I had for the tea boxes, you know, from where they are, um, where most of them seem to be starting, it looks like they're starting fairly, fairly close to existing paths. Um, would it be possible to integrate those tee boxes into the paths so that, you know, there's, you know, they kind of flow naturally, you know, you don't have a path and then four feet and then a tee box. I mean, does that make sense? Uh, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. Well, do you think that might interfere with people who are just walking the paths? Well, I mean, they're 10 feet long, right? You know, you could make them a little bit longer. There's no reason, you know, 
but still have a natural, like I said, instead of path four feet, then tee box. For the if sake of the park, for the sake of the park, I, I think that that is, it all, it's all dependent where it lays out. Mm -hmm. And the golfers are, you know, are traditionally walking across grass anyway, but it would also depend on where the tee box is in reference to the trails. But if the trail is already paved, it would require cutting into the paved surface to integrate it into that path, which would be no. Solid. It would be next. It would be next to it, and we have no requirements yes. to have to connect. There's no mm -hmm. requirements for ADA or uh, code compliance to have that tied to the trail either. So, okay, I have a totally different question, Matthew. Completely, this is it. It looks like a nice course well planned in Central Park but would you be up for potentially another part of Central Park or another part of the park system? I'd be up to that. Such as those of you all such as Neiman um, where it is not used it's an open field. Um, I don't know if it's large enough. Neiman, just for everybody's sake, Neiman is not cut presently. It is not maintained to a natural grass level, and it is very, very wet. Is it, it's in a floodplain. I, I would like for Matthew to to check it out. I mean, I think this is good. I think it's um, it fits in, but I don't understand. I mean, you know. Matthew, I, I think your idea of a disc golf course in the Central Park area is a um, very nice, you've thought it out, a really good idea. I'm just not right now prepared to say, yes, let's put it right where you initially planned. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't want you to move forward with your plan. So so the, the rest of the board, what do you guys think? Are you are you in favor of um, Matthew moving forward with the idea of a disc golf course? Kathy, I have one additional question. Um, you know, one of my things with the disc golf is, and I've seen courses at a, a number of other parks. Is there really a big draw? Is this really a big draw is the question. And I would ask uh, Karen as well, you know, what yeah. her, feedback is from maybe other parks that do have this. I'm sure she's heard some yeah. things. Yeah, Paul, it's, it's Karen. Using them. It's Karen. Um, can you hear me? I think yep. I turned. I think I got my speaker up. Yep. Um, yes, it is. A, it is a popular activity. It's a and it's also a minimally intrusive activity. So sure. I think as, I, as I'm sitting here looking wherever it ends up, um, if you look at the course of trans wherever whatever park or location it would be put in, all you would really see are the baskets and then depending upon the tee pads, whatever version of that would be um, amenable to the board uh, and aesthetically pleasing. Um, I know that there are several other courses. I have several friends that play and uh, it's quite active, um, but at the same time, you don't necessarily see um, scores of people all the time. They play at different times um, and spread out. So it'd be, I, I anticipate that it would be regularly used and also would incorporate or allow us to incorporate programming opportunities, um, if not uh, some little tournament activities, I would assume I'll, I'll ask Matt that question as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's multifaceted, uh, very, very minimally intrusive. I do need to ask Stephanie, I don't know if Dave's on, relative to the anchoring, yeah. um, relative to the anchoring points, um, does that impact any of the, um, conservation di district or um, impervious surface requirements? It may. I'd, I'd, and also, I'm looking at it in the areas that, you know, the meadow and everything where the EAC has worked um, with the township to, um, you know, keep the uh, area kind of more open, not mowed as much. That's right. proper way to take care of meadows. Um, so, you know, I mean, great presentation, great information. I think, you know, 
probably want to do a little further evaluation. Like Kathy said, look at Neiman, which is also a big field as well, and it floods, so there are issues there. Um, but I think just getting more people involved and eyes on it and feedback is probably going to be somewhat helpful. Yeah, I think uh, often these are in environmentally um, environmental areas um, off the beaten path. Uh, it does not, it should, uh, should not intrude in any of the uh, meadow use. And as Matt said, most people are respectful of the area. So it's a, uh, it's a balancing act. It's all about balance again. So I think mm -hmm. there's oh, conversation and for, for Matthew's time and for our time, I would just like to get a, a feel from our board members if we want um, to recommend that Matthew move forward and work with the township staff moving forward with disc, disc golf for our, our park. What, what do you guys think? Consensus, are, we, are, are you up for it? Do we want to discuss it? What? Uh, sorry, if I could just ask one more question, Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, from my, and I'm trying to think back, you know, from the experience of seeing these courses, are the tee boxes absolutely necessary that they're that, you know, obviously flat, some kind of surface? Because I don't remember seeing them at other disc golf courses. Yeah, they would be necessary because it's a part of the sport to keep, uh, to play off of. Matt, is there okay. one? Okay, well, it was, like I said, I just don't remember seeing them, uh, <laughs> but... You know, Kathy, my opinion is I, I, I do think it's a nice idea, um, but I, I agree with you that we really need to look at where we're putting it. We need to look at the environmental impact. Um, I think that I would love to see it somewhere, but where is the question? Okay. All right. John, how about you, Mary Ann? I, I, have, a, I have a similar um, opinion as Paul. Um, I think that um, this is too big. Uh, a, a, um, a decision to make on the spur of the moment. I, I think uh, I at least want to go and take a look at it in the context of, of um, a, a disc golf course in that part of the park before I would be comfortable making a decision. Uh, it's not on our master plan, which in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. We can, we can still do it, especially if it's a popular activity, gets people out in the park. Um, but I'm concerned about um, the geography and, and some of the other ramifications of putting it in this part of the park. And again, I'd like to take a look at it. Thanks. Is there room to spread it back toward um, New Britain Road, where there are lots of open fields, or are those fields already occupied with sports activities? They, they are already occupied. Um, I might phrase a question a little bit different. Is, if the, if the, is the board amenable to the concept of a disc golf course and staff working with Matt to maybe narrow down some of the, the details uh, and um, investigating other locations and revisiting the board maybe next month. I am. Thank you, Karen. That, yes, because I, I think that, that that's what we need to do is ask Matt if he's willing to do a little more into it. So yes, what Karen just said, what, what do you guys, Think about that. The first time I looked at this map, I the, the first th the first thought I had was maybe this would be a better um, project for Neiman Park, and I, and I'm not ignoring the, the the fact that it's maybe not mowed, maybe that's not a good idea, but I was just thinking that uh, it would be nice to find some other activity that um, that worked well at Neiman Park. Hello. So anyway, I, I agree. I, I I'd like to I I, I would like um, look at other parts of our park system to see if there's another spot where he thinks it would work well. Matt, are you amenable to working with us to look around and see what other options we can come up with? Uh, so I hear that we're definitely interested in the concept, uh, just trying to pin down the best location. Yes, I'm open to ideas. Okay. Okay, good, good. Yeah, and the one I, thing, I, it, it, I mean, it does look a little cluttered to me here in this part of the park. Would even if it is at Central Park, would it possible to be possible to take like five through nine um, up the bypass 
like towards the parking lot. I don't know, I'm, you know, that's just a, a question. Yeah. I think that would spread it out a little more. Um, you know, I'd like to see those kinds of options. So, so Matthew, would you be, and, and we don't need to take, I, I think we do have questions, but maybe um, at some point it would be nice to, to meet with you and go over your plan and, and see. So maybe, maybe next meeting. Let's, let's move forward, but you work with the township right now and see about maybe other locations. Are you good with that? I can do that. Okay. I think, Kathy? Yes. I think it is a um, good activity because you don't have to be physically that fit to play and enjoy it. I think it's good for all ages from children up to uh, senior citizens. So I think that could be something that we could add to the park system that gives a different focus. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think Matthew, we're in agreement that the golf, the disc golf course is a great idea. We just want you to pursue other locations as well. Board, do you all agree with that? Yes. And, yeah. and awesome. would you have time to, to revisit us next meeting? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. An excellent job on your presentation. Thank yes. you very much. Excellent. Your time. Um, so you can continue to work with Rick and with Karen and and then um, you again in a month. How about that? Sounds good. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. Great job. There's Kathy. Hi, Hi Kathy. How are you? I'm here. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm well. How are you doing? Sorry. Good, I'm good. Are you by any chance taking notes as you're listening? Um, I just missed the presentation, but I'll start taking notes right now. I One. mean, I literally came in like six minutes ago. Okay. But I did get the direction that we just gave to Matthew. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Uh, and, and I will get you. Well, you have his name. And I, ha and I have, I actually have his presentation, so I can incorporate that as well. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, I'm glad. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, guys. Um, keep any, we don't have any visitors, any public comment? Joe's here. Um, <laughs> Joe, do you have any? No, any no, pu no public comment. Okay. All righty. Did anybody read the meeting notes? <laughs> yes. Did you see my two comments on that, Kathy? No. Okay, so the one thing, the two things I saw that were an issue with those minutes were that uh, it had Kevin being in person uh, when he was on Zoom. Okay. And also it did not list Mr. Joe Salvati as being on Zoom. Okay. Other than that, I am good with the minutes. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Any no. questions? Is there a motion to approve them as edited? I'll make the edits. I move that we approve them. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, good. All right, um, moving on, park assessment. Um, what I would like to do, I, we, Kelly, John, Kevin, Blythe, um, headed out and visited the, the parks. Um, again, our premise was almost the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to assess what is there, what needs to be improved, and um, th what's good, what needs to be improved, and as far as maintenance goes, um, additions that we can make, and then improvements to be made as well. Um, so we sent it out. Has everybody had a chance to look at it? Yes. Um, yes. What, I, what I would like to do is just spend a little bit of time, comments, additions. I don't want to go through the whole thing because we can all read if you all are all right with that. Are you, um, that's why we sent it out early so that we could take a look at it and hopefully you could note 
either what you wanted to add or what you disagreed with or changes you wanted to make. So, Kathy, I, just for clarification, so what's, what's the goal here? Are we submitting a, submitting a final document um, with the comp plan? I know that Ways and Means wanted it as well. So are we, are we saying that we agree with the documents you sent out today and those are going to be submitted or are they going to be edited and changed and, you know, I'm guessing, so what's the plan with these documents is the question. So, so the, the plan is that what we have as our report will be worked on potentially edited, but the meat of it stays the same and will become a part. We will work with Judy, with the township and our assessment will become a part of the updated comprehensive plan. So that um, what we have determined will become a part of that and then be presented and move on that way. Karen, Steph, add, um, I'm just trying to keep things short and sure. sweet. I'll, I'll jump in real quick. It's a, it's a common piece to a, a comprehensive plan. And as you're all familiar with the existing comp plan, it's been a, a pretty, uh, pretty heavily used tool over the years and it, it's been used to secure funding. Always better to have one-stop shopping. Um, the board ultimately will adopt the comprehensive plan. So the work done on the assessment would be included in there and would be recognized by the board as well as, as one piece. So it's a, it's a good thing and it's not an uncommon scenario. Did we answer your question, Paul? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I, I have read through each of the uh, uh, documents. I just haven't gone through them at length. Um, you know, but also, I mean, these aren't, we're not making any permanent changes based on these documents. They're just a, a guideline, right? Right, as is, as is the comp plan. And I think, right. uh, I mean, say, so John, we've, there's a number of times where we've looked at the comp plan where it's not spelled out, but we've, but we've taken action and used the comp plan, comp plan as a guide to um, incorporate different activities, programs, projects. So um, when it's incorporated into that tool, then it's an overall, literally, I hate to use the word comprehensive, um, piece going forward for, to, to go to for funding sources, um, uh, project authorization, we want to do something new and different. Um, you can lean on the, comp, on the comprehensive plan. And those recommendations are, are in part carved out of um, the information and data that's in the plan. So um, we did an update in a full bone plan. Uh, you probably see this in there anyway. So, it's so just, you know, that being said, uh, I'm fine with both documents. Like I said, it doesn't, we're not saying that we have to do everything in the documents, but it's a good basis. It's a good survey by our board and, uh, you know, I'm good with it. Kathy, this is Kelly. Um, the only thing I was going to add, I also agree with the documents. I think it's reflective of the visits that we've had and kind of, and the overall comments. Um, and, and there's, there's frankly, there's a lot in there in terms of improvements. I think we came up with a lot of ideas. So the only thing that occurred to me is that it may be helpful to have priorities. Um, and I don't know how, whether we talked about that or how much, how much we talked about that, or even Karen, if that's something that you would want to see in, go into the comp plan. I know in comp plans, there are a lot of times, you know, of priorities. Right. Um, which we haven't done in terms of either priorities of park or priorities of improvements within them. There would, the, the recommendations that would come out of the assessment um, that would become a tool of the, of the comprehensive plan, um, you can work from there and continue to make priorities outside the plan or inside the plan. So the fact that it's in there still allows the board to say, okay, now let's, let's go into the comp plan, let's visit what we've got and let's start making some priorities and do it that way. Um, or try to outline them in, in the comp plan itself. Uh, we all know that opportunities change and come at, at, come at different times. So sometimes those priorities are shifted around as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so I'm, gonna build, I'm gonna great. build a little bit on, on what Karen just said and, and just note that in, in looking back, um, we've been fortunate enough to be flexible and somewhat opportunistic about being able to implement a lot of the things that we've done over the past 
11 years. Um, and, and I, I'll refer back to the um, uh, revised Central Park Master Plan that I sent around earlier today. Looking at that master plan and just realizing how much of that was implemented since it was de developed, um, uh, we've, we've really done a lot. It's a great idea to have a plan and, and to know what we need so that as we have opportunities along the way, we can take advantage of them. A perfect case in point are the two playing fields over near New Britain Road. Because we had those playing fields on the master plan, Dick John, our former um, uh, Department of Public Works head, um, was able to orchestrate the development of those fields, taking advantage of something that was happening, happening at the time with the construction of the parkway. Uh, so those kinds of things pop up, whether they're priorities or not. I mean, it, it's, it's nice to prioritize them, but that doesn't seem to have any bearing on when we're actually able to do them. It's really a matter of, of luck and, and financing. So that's and, my perspective. So we implemented the plan. Um, we were coming up short in, in um, addressing senior needs, senior citizen needs, and we tried to look around what's the trends, what's the opportunity, uh, health and wellness, and that's how the life trail came about. So sometimes it's not super specific. Um, sometimes it's a little more ambiguous. We know we have to head in a certain direction, and other times it can be spelled out and drawn out, like John said, on a, on a master plan. Um, this golf is a perfect example. It's a wonderful uh, activity. It's, uh, it's always been something in the back of my mind, but you know, it's just not something that's come to the forefront, but opportunity is presenting itself and that wasn't planned, but it addresses many needs that we could probably check off in the comp plan. So, great. I have, I have one comment, Kathy, it, um, which I just feel like might be helpful is some sort of um, an introduction page that would indicate that the members of the Park and Rec Committee who went out, who looked at it, um, when it occurred, so that it's kind of in a context. I, I don't know if that's necessary or not, but looking yeah. at the document, it, I feel like that's that was missing for me. Okay. It just sort of dives right in. And you may not be aware, Steph, we have a meeting with Judy tomorrow. Um, for the incorporation and so some of those things outlined in the plan will will take the form of recommendations in the plan so okay. it'll, it'll um i think we could highlight and we should highlight that it was completed by the park and recreation board absolutely it was their effort yeah. their work um but it'll be incorporated um in a fairly standard fashion into the comprehensive and, and that's fine that's all i was kind of looking for karen Good, good point, Steph. Good point. One of the things that John, you mentioned as far as the, the master plan and the updated master plan, one of the things that I liked about this, we have almost a whole new board. So we have new eyes looking at the, the, the park, at all parks. That was one of the reasons that this was, you know, if you all remember, <clears throat> was that we weren't focused. We felt everybody focused on Central Park and we want every we want to look at the park system and I feel like like we did that that we have brought out um, the, the highlights and the the other parks that are there and what's what's available or what's not available um, but there are a couple notes that that I would like to um, I mean John made some comments I had a comment and I, I want you guys to understand that that um, there is a meeting tomorrow and Judy will be there. Um, Dave, are you in there tomorrow? Is Dave there? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I am. Uh, Karen, I don't know, Steph, are you? Um, to, to go over this, just to um, to share it with the staff and with Judy for the comp plan and also to discuss improvements, maintenance, um, maybe some of what we think are improvements can be handled under maintenance. So um, it, it will be a discussion of our assessment um, with, with the township, with the staff as well. Um, again, not priorities, but just um, a discussion of, of our ideas, what's in their plans, and potentially um, 
short term, long term um, kind of um, how our assessment matches up with plans within the township as well. Am I speaking, am I saying that correctly, Karen or Steph? Yeah, I, I think it, I can, I'm sitting here listening to what everybody said. And I think it's a, it's a clarification, continuity of bringing everything together into, into one um, outline and incorporation so that we can march forward the same way we did with the original comp plan and everything is laid out um, as a working as a working tool. So in, in, in saying that, um, John, you brought up um, permanent composting toilets as, as opposed to porta potties. Hadn't thought of it. Um, is, is that something we want to consider? Is that? Um, I, I have mixed feelings um, at, um, at really both parks. Uh, at, uh, at, on the one hand, I'm concerned about vandalism. On the other, I'm concerned about flooding. Uh, but I hate porta potties. Uh, I think that to have porta potties is what's tantamount to a permanent fixture in our parks is kind of tacky. So that's why I threw that out there for discussion. Um, I'm um, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that it's a good idea to have uh, to build a bathroom facility in Central Park. This is something that clearly we've been talking about for well over a decade. I don't think the need is getting any any less. I think it's getting more, and uh, I'd like to see that on our list. Um, the only other thing, other two things, are uh, we we took away the, the little the little golf course um, because the golfers were chipping their balls into the game grove. We'd always uh, planned, at least tentatively, in putting it up by Blyce House. Um, I'm not a golfer, and I could care less, but, but an awful lot of our residents are, and, and I don't know if we want to think about uh, at least putting that on our plan, whether we actually do it or not is to be determined. Um, and then the other thing that I didn't put on our, our list was we talked about uh, cutting a, another nature trail through Hearts Woods. Kathy, I think you mentioned that while we were, um, while we were walking around. And um, I, I, I kind of like the idea. I don't know how practical it is, but um, uh, it, it, maybe we should put that on the list just for something to consider if we ever get the opportunity. And that's all I had. Um, well, so I did put in, in Central Park as far as a way to connect the proposed community building with the, what I'm calling the New Britain campus and the Wells Road campus. Um, and a way that if we have camp at the community center, how those campers are going to get most direct way to Kids Castle or Central Park. So John, I think we're talking the same thing. I just don't know if I want to cut through the woods per well, se. Around the periphery, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of where that, that um, existing semi-trail is now, which I don't think goes right. to the from the maintenance yard you're talking about? Right. Yeah, it's almost a trail anyway. Yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's the most direct up and down too. So, and, and that is in the, um, in the improvements right. for Central Park. Now, now um, as far as the bathrooms at Central Park, the more I'm there, the more, I believe that that if we need bathrooms anywhere, then it's it's bathrooms at Turk Park, not at Central Park, because we already have bathrooms at Central Park, and people can go on their way into Kids Castle or go on their way out of Kids Castle. But that's my opinion. So I want to hear what other people have to say as far as the, the building new bathrooms in Central Park. That's well, I mean, we're talking, are, are we talking about prioritizing here? Because I thought we weren't going to prioritize. No, no, we're talking about what's on the list and what's... Yeah, so I want both on the list, as far as I'm concerned, right? I, 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 I mean, I agree with you, Kathy, that I would probably rather have the full-time bathrooms at Turk Road. Um, <laughs> but I also agree that we should have them by Kids Castle at some point. Um, so, you know, beyond the prioritizing... I'm good with the bathrooms everywhere. 
I think John's right. I don't love the look of porta potties at all. And if there's a better option, then I would definitely like to do that, uh, you know, at Sourman as well as, um, you know, uh, Turk Road or Turk Park. So, like I said, I, I'm for getting rid of the porter potties if it's at least a composting toilet, whatever, you know, is better than the porter potties. Uh, if we could get permanent at Turk and Kids Castle, that would be great. Yeah, I, I agree with Paul. One thing I think you can do is one thing you can do is inst you don't have to be uh, as this gets incorporated. You're making your assessment and recommendations. One of the recommend that you could come at it a little bit more broad based that uh, that you're going to continue that you're going to continue to investigate. Um, I'm not <laughs> pulling words right right now, but um, at a at a, at a uh, bathroom plan uh, across that you're talking about a lot about the park system as a whole so you could continue to develop that it's uh -huh. still in the it's still in the assessment in the comp plan and then pull on it as those opportunities become available and then you you know what you want to do across the board for all of them so it could be a little bit more generally stated but the outcome and the end goal is the same that makes sense Uh, okay, so in saying that we're we're keeping is that um, the I mean, as you can see from I think uh, all the way back in 1995 when the original master plan we were going to build a pool and there's no pool there, which is why the the updated master plan came about. So things change, but you want to if it's on the radar, then keep then have it on the radar for in whatever form or fashion, so that when opportunity does knock or opportunity becomes available then you can move forward and make recommendations based on. And just going, I guess, from what you just said, Karen, and, and what John said earlier, it's better to be inclusive in okay. making our recommendations. So the foundation is there when we are able, the township's able to do something moving forward. So on that basis, and I agree with everything Paul said, I would be, in favor of putting them in both locations, especially if we're not prioritizing anything. Yeah, I have a question about the kids' castle bathrooms. Um, my question, and maybe it's not a question, it's a concern, is there are lots of groups that bring buses into kids' castle. And I think that if we make bathrooms that accessible, um, it, I think it's gonna become a maintenance issue, just trying to keep them clean. Um, and I'm not sure if we want to go into making it that accessible. Um, it, there is a bathroom that is easily reached from Kids Castle. So I would like to see bathroom focus more on Turk Park where there isn't anything. I think, I think bathrooms is a much broader discussion area to go yeah, to you're right. forward. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of unbiased about any of it. At, at the moment, but we have a 140 acre park in Central Park, so it kind of comes where's the best location. Turk is a large park, where's the best location? So I think there's still some some things to, to talk about um, in the long haul. And, so, and what, what comes out of this building. So then do we want to put under general observations that that the bathroom issue in all parks needs to be addressed and not put it specifically under Central Park or under Turk Park or and and leave it at that. And that's a general observation. Does that make sense? No, I don't think there's any. I don't, think, uh, we don't need bathrooms in all of our parks. No. Say all that right. again. I said we don't need bathrooms in all of our parks. Well, um, I, I, I agree. I think we should prioritize on Turk and Kids Castle and maybe upgrading Sourman, you know, but if we leave it that broad, you know, are, are we saying that we want it at Naaman's, you know, do we want it at the Ridings, you know, we don't really want no, it. No, we don't. Right. No. No. Yeah. no, absolutely not. But we are, I mean, we do, you know, they're porta potties. I mean, the only, Castle Valley does not have a porta potty. No, Bridgepoint does not have a porta potty. No. Turk has five. Um, New Britain campus has one. Um, I mean, so there are a lot of porta potties 
at our parks. You know, there, um, Sourman has one. Like I said, um, Bridgepoint does not. The Ridings isn't really a park. It's a neighborhood area, but, but so I will put, so you want me to leave, um, we have it at Turk um, for improvements, new restroom building. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, look, I think we can get specific and there's basically three things in my head that we're talking about. Kicks Castle permanent bathroom, uh, Turk Park permanent bathroom, and also potentially upgrading any porta potties. Okay. I think that's a nice blanket statement. Does that make sense? Works for me. Okay. So, and maybe I'm beating a dead horse here, but what concerns me is that we say bathrooms at Kids Castle. Is it that is it Kids Castle bathrooms or is it bathrooms in a different area in the park? Because we have the amphitheater there as well. Um, well you, know, you, have, you have the amphitheater, you have a pavilion, you've got uh, the picnic grove. Well, I think it's Kids Castle area. You know what I mean? I'm doing air quotes over here. You know, it doesn't have to be right next to Kids Castle. But. All, right, all right. So we'll leave it new rest as far as new restroom building. Right. Not necessarily earmark at Kids Castle, correct? Fine. Yeah. Are yep. we okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Excuse me. Can I say something as a resident? I'd like to add a comment. Go ahead, Joe. Are we, are we, uh, was that final thing to exclude the name of Kids Castle? Is that w what you're saying in reference to that bathroom? Yes, that it's a new restaurant building. It's a new restaurant building in Central Park. Okay. Not, not specifically for Kids Castle. I, yeah. would, I would like to, again, not as a board member, but as a resident, follow along with what John and Paul was saying, and even Kelly was saying, uh, three of your members to mention Kids Castle, um, cause the other area of Central Park is served by the bathroom across the road. And there are no bathrooms close to, to Kids Castle. And the closer they are to Kids Castle, they'll also serve for the amphitheater and the we pavilion and the picnic yeah. tables. And it, also, it also, that you'll have a bathroom on one side and then you'll have a bathroom on the other side. So I think it's important to, as the other three board members mentioned, to mention Kids Castle because you're talking about the location of it. Plus we get hundreds of, of emails over a period of time of parents with, um, uh, children with special needs uh, having to try, it's a very, very long distance when you're traveling with young children who are playing to try to get from Kids Castle all the way. It's a great distance all the way down the other side of the park to get to those bathrooms. So for special needs kids, especially because we um, spent you know, over $450,000 to improve the playground for children of all abilities, including special needs. I think it's a very valid thing. And I agree with the other three board members that mentioning Kids Castle area is, is important. Okay, uh, thank you, Joe. I, I um, appreciate what Joe said. When we mentioned this, we did not, it, in the assessment, it is new restroom building. Um, I, I don't know if we, when we talk about it, is it location or is it specific? Um, and I, again, I do not, if we're talking a new restroom building, I do not think it should be limited to Kids Castle, but that's, that's my opinion, so. I know that the rest of you mentioned I can't, why can't it be at. in a place that's accessible. I mean, why do we need to label it Kids Castle? Because what else are you going to call it? Is I mean, like, I, I don't know what, 
it's on the other side of the be in between so and i think we're wasting time here what we yeah. what we have is another restroom in the area of central park could it be in between could it be where the shade structures are could it be up closer to the pavilion are we building a bathroom specifically in no. all of Central Park, specifically for Kids Castle. That's my... And that's, I think that's why if we say Kids Castle area, I mean, it's, it's an obvious icon. It, you know, it doesn't have to be right next to Kids Castle. Yeah, um, I, again, if, if we had a better name to call it, you know, Eastern part of the park, whatever it might be, you know, I'd be fine with that. But I mean, you know, and we could say it doesn't have to be right next to Kids Castle, but in that general area, it's a service... We could also say to service the pavilion, the band shell, or the amphitheater, the band shell, the picnic grove, you know, um, you know, that's what it's there for, not just Kids Castle. We could say that. Yeah, I agree. That sounds, that's exactly correct. Are, are you all okay with that as, as uh, far as servicing uh, so. all of those? Yes. Yes. Um, okay, I'll do that. All right. Um, anything else on um, on our assessment? Not for me. And I, I'm going to have to uh, excuse myself pretty soon. Kathy, I apologize. I have another Zoom meeting at seven as well that I have to jump on at six forty-five. Okay. Um, so hold on. Um, do we have? A rec building update. Jeff, you want me to go? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, we do the uh, request for proposals for uh, feasibility architectural design um, were sent out. We received 17 proposals. They were uh, very thoroughly reviewed and they're down to six. Um, those six are being interviewed. Um, and three took place today um, and three tomorrow. I think that it's the chairman's um, goal to try to narrow it down um, to the top one or two and make offering to the board of supervisors at, um, I'm not sure which meeting step. August. Uh, August meeting and um, hopefully begin that process um, in the very near future um, and so we, we had three three nice interviews today um, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, very very qualified um, candidates and uh, working through that and all all everybody will be kept up to date and, pro and receive updates as we have information to provide okay all right hey so right now it's actually moving forward <laughs> good good um paul social media um, can we table that till next meeting? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to be stalled. I mean, I guess we could talk with, with if we're going to talk with Ryan. I guess we can move forward it that way. Um, you know, but obviously, I would like to move forward at some point. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, can I can I make an apology? Is Ryan on? Yes. Ryan I'm here. I want to thank Ryan. Ryan's also was on the in on the interviews and uh, asked and both of, you know very very good and and sound production. So Ryan, I apologize. I didn't mean I did not intentionally uh, exclude you on that. Uh, no, no, no apology necessary. Okay. Um, we're out of time. Uh, I, I think looking for future events, bike hike. Um, we can table that till next meeting as well. Um, especially John and Kelly, if you all have to hop off, do you all have five? Well, it's, um, five, um, a few minutes. Yeah. 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 So, um, bike and hike real fast. Um, Mary Ann has been working on, I met with bike and hike and they asked us to do descriptions for, our various parks for the bike path and Mary Ann has been working on that. So that's, that's a, um, a plus getting out. Um, 
so that people will have an idea of all of our different parks and not Central Park. Um, looking forward to future events. Paul, we've kind of talked about that a little bit. Do you want to, to mention that? Right. So I guess the question is, and, you know, I don't know that we have to go in, into detail on this uh, meeting. Maybe we could all think about it for next meeting. Um, you know, two things popped up that we discussed, right? The possibility of a worst case doing a some sort of Christmas event um, that we thought might be a nice idea uh, towards the end, you know, in, in December, at least it would be something this year that we did and people could look forward to it and that kind of thing. So that's one thing I'd ask everybody to think about. And then the other thing is, you know, I was out in another park in, um, I think it was Hatfield, um, you know, and they had live music uh, just recently, about a, a week or two ago. They did a, a very good job, um, social distancing, and everybody was wearing masks, and they had tons of signage about doing the right things. And it wasn't a big deal, but at least it was something, and it was nice to see <laughs> something. Um, so... I think that that's, you know, something that I'd like to talk about as well. Uh, maybe everybody could think about it for the next weekend. Uh, I'm sure Karen has some ideas, but obviously we are running out of time. Karen, you have a scheduled uh, movie night coming up, right? Yeah, can I, I mean, I, I know can... we didn't, we're not going forward with the concerts because, you know, yeah. we don't meet the, we it, don't meet it, the, the criteria the minimum for requirements we max out um, even which is, is uh, 500 right now, so right now that's bad but uh, on a on a regular basis that's a great thing to have those kinds of crowds um for me I, has everybody seen our the section for the website um that that is up um awesome. it's under departments on the on the township site we work very very hard on that um John, I took your, there's a map. We had a map built that's in there. I, I did and, see it there. I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go, but I, okay. I just want to compliment you on, on the, the website. I think it looks great. We've got lots of maps on there, and now I can find my way around. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a work in progress. There, you'll see plenty of areas that are still in work. And, and I think most important that I wanted to mention tonight is that we have a real strong push right now for continuity. We're trying to build a continuity across everything we do, rebrand a little bit. Um, I uh, have incorporated a tagline, which I wanted to run by you and hope that you all embrace. It is, now I can't, I didn't write it down. It is uh, play, play, explore, preserve. That covers just about everything we do in some form or fashion. Um, hopefully you'll embrace that. Um, but Karen, hold on. So just just to because Kelly's got to go and John's got to go. So we have a movie night going. Paul had mentioned about maybe doing some type of of other event between now and the end of the year. We want to think about that. Um, is that potential? Is the movie night is in October and right right now the th the things that are moving forward right now are the golf outing which everyone is aware at 91 right now fight and float is moving forward with strict guidelines as is the golf outing and we traditionally get under the 250 for the movie so we're trying to move forward with that and when is the movie october 10th okay all right so that's right around the corner okay all right so if if anybody has any ideas where we can stay with the 250 from August through the end of the year, let's bring those up to the next meeting, okay? Um, Ryan, we still wanna to talk to you about um, social media and then Paul, we can do a better, um, you can do a better presentation next meeting on that where we have more time. Yeah, one thing, Karen, um, can you send me the webpage, contact, people contact information? I'd like to reach out to them to see if they have any interest in being involved with the social media stuff. The website contact. People I'm not who, sure. Who built our website? Oh, um, yeah, Steph, we have that, right? It's um, yeah. We'll to, I don't know if they do that. Yeah. They usually do. So, and if they're already working with us, it would be obviously you sure. know a good idea to get them involved. So I'd like, like I said, I'd like to reach out to them and see if they do have interest to do that kind of thing. 
I want to I, I want to give kudos to Andrea too, who was the uh, person who helped me get you know uh, I I could I could envision it, but I didn't know how to build a button, so I, now I do. So, <laughs> so right. she was the she's the master uh, builder and and, he, uh, and she did a great and it is a good job. Karen. Yeah. So uh, I I, I handed her the yeah. vision. Anything create it. Anything else we need to discuss right now? We've no. We good to go? Go. So, do you have a? I, the only other thing that we yeah, did that was really successful was camp in a bag. We we filled all fifty spots for camp in a bag. Good. And it was yeah. uh, very well received. Okay. Anything else? No. Yeah. All right. I know Kelly. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. Um, hopefully, we can meet in person next time. That hasn't been working. But is there a, a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. 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 All right, meeting adjourned. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ryan, can you, are you gone? Ryan, are you gone? No, I'm still here. I can stay on for about 15 minutes. Okay, all right, Paul, will you stay on? Yes, Kat. Can, can um, Steph, can we stay on for just a just minute? Just for a few minutes, I have to start the EAC at a little be right around seven or a little before, you okay. know, so. All right, thanks everybody. Most of all Zoom. <laughs> Um, bye. Bye. You, you don't need any of us, right, Kev? Nope. Nope. We're good. Um, so, so since we, Ryan, sorry, since this change to Zoom instead of um, in person, is there another time we can get together or um, something that works? Paul, what about you? What? Well, I don't know. I mean, if we have five, 10 minutes, I don't know if we have that much time, Steph. Um, you know, I think we could go through it, don't you, Kathy? Sure, sure. Probably about five minutes, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get as much done as we can, right? I mean, uh, we're all here, so. I mean, I think the big, so, Ryan, we've been looking at the social, what to do with social media. Um, I think there's kind of a big, we know that there's nobody in the township that's necessarily wants to or you know has a super expertise to do it obviously there's people that could do it but um you know or the know, time well yeah. and the time exactly yeah. so time expertise you know so we've been looking at you know hiring companies that could help us with our social media presence um we've gotten some quotes um i've spoken to a couple of these companies um, you know, the pricing's kind of all over the place, anywhere from $2,000 a month to $200 a month. Um, some people charge by the hour, you know, $55, $60 an hour, um, you know, but it's out there. The services can be done. And the qu next question would be is, do we want to think about a budget for this? You know, and I'll call it a social media marketing budget for Parks and Rec. Um, and do we want to look into hiring a professional on some level to help us? I mean, the one company I spoke to was a smaller company. Um, you know, they said that they would do like a retainer for $250 a month, you know, and that's, that's not going to buy us a ton of action, uh, but it's going to buy us somebody professional to work with and somebody that maybe we could work with that would help us do our own thing. Um, you know, and they'd look at the analytics and they'd, you know, make suggestions and things like that. Um, because like I said, it doesn't seem like we have anybody that wants to take that on. Uh, but it is a pressing need uh, for us to be able to market. So I guess that's... that's and so, so my suggestion is this. I, I will say that um, the reason the bids are all over the place is because um, I've done a lot of market research on companies to do social media for you mm -hmm. um it doesn't really work that well i'll say that because the idea is that you're saying there's not somebody dedicated at the township to do the social media but in on the flip side you bring on one of these firms they're going to need someone dedicated at the township to help develop content and so I'd be interested to look and see what they put in front of you mm -hmm. and also see what their ROI um, is 
in terms of what they're saying they're going to give to you for that pricing. I'd love to look at those first before we talk about if that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I just think, I mean, frankly, if that's the direction that you guys want to go in, I'll find you someone cheaper than any of those that'll do a better job. You know, just, I, it's, I just, I just, I, I have some experience with social media firms and they're, they, you don't really get what they, uh, what they promise, but I'd love to look at that and see what they're, they're thinking and see how they're framing it out. Well, so, so Ryan, the other question is, are we, heading in the right, in your opinion, are we heading in the right direction? I mean, I, I know, you know, that you utilize social media and you, you know, uh, are we, what we want to do, is that the, the right direction for the township? Well, I, I mean, I, I definitely think that an aggressive marketing campaign and the best way to do that is through social media because um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big proponent of it. I use it both personally and professionally and I see the benefits of it. Um, so I mean, yes, but I think it's all about how it fits into, um, the plan. I think it actually, I don't know if Stephanie's still on, but I think it works mm -hmm. well given what we have going on. You know, we heard from our second proposal today, we would use social media. And that's why I asked them, well, what do you mean you would use social media? And they kind of said, well, we'd work with your people, you know. So, you know, it's, it all goes into a, a greater plan, but it's just about identifying the best way to do that. And so I think the next step would be, Paul, if you could send me over um, the proposals that you've gotten so I could take a look at them and then just kind of see – what's there and then really looking at what we actually need um and we can go from there right and i would like to include andrea um <clears throat> you know she i mean we all wear a lot of different hats and you know karen's office has and caitlin have access to the hoot suite to put things out on facebook and twitter and we've done a lot of that um and we do it for the township as, as well. Telecommunications board looks at the analytics um, every month, you know, as a how we're per, you know, how many likes we have, how many participants, things like that. We've developed as part of the new um, website, a thing called Robley, where we can also be putting out information and getting people to participate. Um, for various updates, um, sort of a direct, direct email kind of thing like our Google group. And we wanna move away from that and have everybody on the road leave for different things. Um, I know when uh, Ken Snyder was on the board, we worked with, um, he was doing a communications. Um, he wanted to know how we were communicating, how we could improve our communications. And a woman um, by the name, last name's Wright, um, she's actually, Dick Wright, the Annie's Water Ice guy, Kath, remember him from, you know, Oktoberfest. She does some of this stuff too. And we met with her and she gave us some ideas that we've incorporated um, in some of the things that we've been putting out. So, I mean, I think if what you found, I mean, I'd rather have Ryan look at it with a critical eye to see how it helps, quote, the township, not just park and recreation, but it's a unified message um, for all platforms. Well, I'll get, I'll get, uh, I have one of the proposals. I'll ask the other company for another. Uh, and if I can get this stuff, I really do think if the people from the, doing the website, uh, do this kind of thing, uh, that they might be a good fit. So I'd like to talk to them as well. Um, so yeah, I will get what's written. I mean, it's obviously going to be very broad, uh, and it's not going to be super specific to us, uh, but I will get that and send it over to you, Ryan, and we'll, you know, see what you think. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've got people in the waiting for the next Zoom <laughs> no call. Problem. All right. Thanks, bye, -bye. bye. 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 Bye.